Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Saturday, the 25th day of February 2023, and our topic for today says, God wants you to prosper. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we worship and we bless your name. We are grateful for such a wonderful day that you've let us see again. We thank you for the privilege to be before you. We thank you for the gift of your word that is set to bless us one more time. We have come with our hearts open and ready to receive from your throne of grace. We ask that you would speak and minister life unto us. Cause this word to refresh us spirit, soul and body. Let us be transformed and let our lives bear fruits to your glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27 reads, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Psalm 35 verse 27 And our text for today would be in two parts. We would be reading first from Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12 to 14, then we would read next from 3 John chapter 2. Our first text for today, Genesis chapter 26 verse 12 to 14 reads, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession of flocks and possession of heads, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12 to 14. Next we are reading from 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, and it reads, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more says, God wants you to prosper. And in the body of our devotional for today, our Father in the Lord says to us that in John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus Christ promised that he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Furthermore, in Psalm 68 verse 19, the Bible says that God daily loads us with benefits. God wants you to prosper because the Bible says clearly in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 15 that the destruction of the poor is their poverty. You will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says clearly that it is the love of money and not money itself that is the root of all evil. God wants you to prosper because his plan for your life is that you will be a blessing. You cannot be a blessing to others if you are not blessed. If you have nothing to eat, how are you going to feed the poor? I decree into your life, you will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Some preachers talk about the story of Lazarus and the rich man in Luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 31, saying, Because the rich man went to hell while Lazarus the beggar was carried into Abraham's bosom, then rich people will all go to hell while only the poor will go to heaven. That conclusion is not in line with the story. When you study that passage very well, you would see that the rich man pleaded for Lazarus to go back to earth to preach to his brothers. But Father Abraham responded that if his brethren did not listen to the prophets, they would not listen to Lazarus either. It is therefore clear that it is not wealth that sent the rich man to hell, but rather his refusal to listen to the prophets. John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 16 clearly shows that the way to make it to heaven is to be born again. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, if you are not born again, you are going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. 
You can be the richest person in the world and go to heaven if you are born again. You can be the poorest fellow in the world and go to hell if you refuse to surrender your life to Jesus. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 states clearly that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. You cannot end up in hell when your wealth comes from the Lord and you live according to his will. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more says, God wants you to prosper. Hallelujah. And I'm really excited that this study is coming to us today to correct a mindset that so many believers may have held wrongly for so long. Our topic for today states clearly without any element of doubt that God truly intends and desires for you to prosper. It means that he's in support for you to do well. He wants you to flourish. He wants you to do exploits. He wants your life to be the story that would reveal to everyone else the kind of thoughts that he says he thinks towards us. The thoughts that he says are of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end, to give us a hope and a future. God truly wants you to prosper and it is so sad how some believers would think otherwise. As a matter of fact, you would agree with me that some believers would think that a level of lack and want is necessary to demonstrate that you truly love God. It is so sad that some even believe that others who are doing well may be doing so through some other means. That is not true. The latter part of our memory verse for today from the book of Psalm 35 verse 27 tells us, Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So the question we should be asking is, are you truly his servant? If you are his servant, then he delights in your prosperity. That scripture says, he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. It brings him great joy. It brings him fulfillment to see you excel in all spheres of life. So we can also say on the flip side, that it brings him displeasure when he sees any of his genuine children not prospering. Also know that the prosperity of believers brings God honor. Our Father in the Lord gives an example in today's study. He says, if you have nothing to eat, how are you going to feed the poor? What testimony would your own life be reflecting when you tell someone that Jesus provides? As a matter of fact, the prosperity of God's children is also an instrument for effective soul winning and evangelism. It also becomes easy to support kingdom activities. It took Joseph of Arimathea, whom the scripture refers to as a rich man, an honorable counselor, one who was referred to as Jesus' disciple, a man of influence, to go boldly to meet Pilate and request for the body of Jesus Christ for proper burial. It would also take men who understand the need to prosper, whom God has blessed and placed in strategic places, to continue to move the course of his kingdom forward. Scripture tells us thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The prosperity of believers also has a part to play in the fulfillment of that. Hallelujah! We can find an example of a man who prospered in one of our texts for today, Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12 to 14. There we read about Isaac. Scripture says he sowed in the land and received an hundredfold. Scripture says he became very great. He had all kinds of possessions. And the latter part of Genesis chapter 26 verse 14 tells us that the Philistines envied him. You can imagine how blessed a man would be that an entire nation would begin to envy him. That is where God is taking you to in Jesus' name. Now third John chapter 1 verse 2, which was our second text for today, tells us, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So if we are to place in order of priority, you would see that God desires that our soul would prosper first. Then other areas of our lives could follow the same pattern. It means beyond the money, the fame, the position, the influence and every other thing that God can give to us, the prosperity of our soul is what matters to him the most. And the soul that is not yet saved, making our Lord Jesus its personal Lord and Savior, has not prospered irrespective of all the wealth that that person may be able to amass. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. 
our Father in the Lord lays more emphasis to this today as he tells us that it doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor. If you are not born again, you are going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. He says that you can be the richest person in the world and go to heaven if you are born again. So we can see clearly that the blessings of God to a man who has surrendered his life to Jesus cannot hinder him from going to heaven. Our Father in the Lord also says that you can be the poorest fellow in the world and go to hell if you refuse to surrender your life to Jesus. Now that is double tragedy. Scripture tells us that what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Now imagine how terrible and how the scripture would have even put it if a man was to still not gain the whole world yet lose his soul. And of course we know that we cannot even gain the whole world. If you have not made the Lord Jesus your Lord and Savior, then you are joking with the torments in hell. It is not something to imagine, talk more or less, experiencing it. Make your ways right with him today if you have not done so. I would like us at this point to bow our heads and ask the Lord to search our hearts. There are many things that may be clouding our hearts. The impure desire for things that have totally left him out of the equation in our lives. So many of us want things for ourselves. For our pleasure, we no longer desire resources and things. For the kingdom exploits, we can do with them. We desire them to spend them upon our lusts. Can we say, Father, please have mercy upon us and purify our desires. Purify our hearts. Purify our intentions. In the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord to help us today that we would desire him above riches, above wealth, above possessions that our hearts would seek him above worldly gain. Let him be our priority in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today for the grace that no amount of his blessings upon our lives would ever make our hearts to deviate from him. Ask him that he will grant us the grace to manage effectively all that he has put in our care. In the name of Jesus. Now ask the Lord also say, Father, please grant me the grace for the prosperity of my soul in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord, to engage consciously to have a fruitful walk with you in the name of jesus ask him say father let me fall deeper and deeper in love with you daily in jesus name his word also tells us that he has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants why not ask the lord say father find pleasure in my prosperity as i seek to reveal and glorify you in all things lord let my prosperity bring you glory and honor in jesus name ask the lord also say father Walk upon our hearts and grant us the understanding that you truly delight in our prosperity. Ask him for a total turnaround of every mindset that seeks to endorse poverty. We declare a renewal of mindsets happening right now. Let our minds be changed and transformed into his perfect will and desire for us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our dear Father, we thank you for today's word. We thank you for making us step into new levels of prosperity in you. We ask that in our lives and through our lives, you would be revealed and you would receive all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a key point in today's study that says, Poverty is not a visa to heaven and wealth is not a visa to hell. We receive the grace today to walk with wisdom and to enjoy all of God's prepared blessings for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12 down to chapter 15. Hallelujah. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. The Lord bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 26 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing, There shall be showers of blessing. Have a lovely day ahead, enjoying showers of God's blessings all around. Kindly remember to also put Nigeria in prayers, as we would be going to the polls today. If you are also available, kindly exercise your rights, cast your votes, and uphold Nigeria in prayers as we step into a new season. Have a beautiful day ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now. I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. 
kindly leave a comment you can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached god bless you have a great day and see you tomorrow